welcome back to the channel guys thanks for joining us for another video on team exploring and yeah today we've got a fantastic location lined up i have got a couple of locations lined up to be honest but this one i've been waiting to come here for a very long time so we're at saint thomas and beckett church Hep hepton stall in hebden bridge um, so there is some ruins of the old churches which date back to the 1200s very very old um, they did have some damages in the 1800s from some storm and, and parts of the buildings did come down but yeah we'll look into that and there's plenty of information boards in here so yeah it is this part of the church is still live and used and the ruins are over there so there is there is a couple of um, council workers working in the oh just look at that in the background you just see that castle castle ruin top and that is just beautiful guys so yeah it's um, very exciting to finally get here i've been wanting to come here for around six months now and it does kind of have a tie-in with one of one of the other videos some really really old graves in there so yeah this ties in with um the tractor graveyard video which i will tag and pin at the end of this video but yeah it's um apparently one of the coiners owned that house and he's buried in here along with a famous poet slash writer she's in here so people like to leave coins on his grave and pens on her grave so yeah it'd be interesting to go and see them and um yeah just um we'll try and stay away from the the maintenance men they're just mowing all the lawns and stuff like that and keeping it nice and tidy so we'll stay away from them and try not to get any noise pollution we have got plenty of signs up commonwealth war graves which would be nice to see i've just just seen one of the graves marked 1800s dogs not allowed a couple of little signs we like to keep it nice and tidy but yeah lovely I'm just videoing, I'm a vlogger. It's, there's quite a lot of history here. Yes, sir. Yeah, St. Thomas and Beckett Church, the old ruins. I've been reading up on it for around six months now. Six months? You must know everything by now. No, no, there's still plenty more to learn. Really? But it's such a fascinating place. Really? I, well, I find it fascinating really? anyway. I've yeah. only been here since 1976. Wow. So, therefore, I've still got a lot to learn as well. Well, you must know a hell of a lot more than me. I would try to be capable of that, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you do. Just coming into this village, it has such a um, such a vibe and feeling about it. Everyone's just lovely and it just seems... You know, they're not all lovely. That's what I don't like. I've been away to Devon. I went to Devon for 15 years in the middle of all this from the 70s you've been away for a yeah, couple of years well, and come back we were there yeah we've been yeah. back 10 years now and right. uh, we used to have a beautiful house down northgate and now i'm in a little corner cupboard but that's because i'm very very old and you're better off in a little corner cupboard when you're old you don't look too old love. don't too be too old. hard on yourself i'm 77 and i you think look fantastic for oh, 70. do you know i don't I'd say you look 50. Oh, you're a dear sweet I'm boy. I'm being but honest. You're a I'm a lounge lizard. I would. <laughs> yeah, sorry to intrude. I don't mean to uh, come across as rude or anything. I'm just. You're not coming across as anything at the time. Just wanted to have it's a little nose. Yeah. Have you got um, Sylvia Plath? Yes, I've just spoke about her on my vlog. Oh, Is that right. the famous poet the, slash writer? The American one. The American? Yes. Nose is starting to run. I'm allergic to you. And I think you're called Bobby. That's my son's name. Oh. I have another one. Bella, my daughter, and I have Teddy across my chest. You've adopted a Teddy. And I don't want no more children. Thank you very much. Well, I've run out of places to, to write them. <laughs> <laughs> Not at my age. No way. No way. Oh, right. So is this the first time you've been up here? First time I've been here. It's been in my. It's been in my locations to visit in yeah. my bucket list for around six months now. Right. So I originally wanted to come to see the coiner's grave. Why? Because I believe I went to his house a couple of months ago. I've been told it was his house. Right. 
So it was. He was a bastard. So I believe. He so I believe. People whilst they were alive, he tortured people. He was horrendous. Wow. He was a dreadful man. And people come along with a bunch of flowers. They don't last five minutes. I bet they wait don't. they've gone out the grave. Yeah. Graveyard, and then the flowers seem to just yeah. disappear. I have brought a pen for our author to leave i believe that people like to leave pens on or around her grave and you brought a pen if there was pens there i, I thought it might be nice to put one Why? there it's called littering and it's called abuse okay i won't do that then you better not i promise i won't you won't be coming back in this village <laughs> if you do it's the, the grave belongs to her mother right and her sister they paid for it yeah People can't put plastic pens into a grave. I, I do get it from, from Ex that point of view. Extremely, extremely rude. Do you know what? I'm glad you mentioned that because it opens it up from that other aspect of looking at it. Well, because those are the university women who are dykes, usually, and think she was very badly done to by Ted Hughes. Yeah. And he was as bad as her, and she was as bad as him. She had lovers and and relationships and all that sort of thing. Yeah. They were both as bad as each other, but they don't take that on board. They only talk about him. Yes. It's silly, and it's because they're feminists, right. and that's the slant they've taken, which is a shame. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry I've shouted her. It was only a little We all need a telling off now and again. Well, it was only a little one. <laughs> you keep me on the straight and narrow. Well, I'll never do that because I'm not on the straight now. <laughs> and I'm nearly too old to be on the straight now, but maybe there's... My husband only died four months ago. Wow. So I actually think there's a little bit of life left in me. I might just get up to some more mischief if my legs can keep going. Yeah. Because I went to the Royal Ballet School when I was a young woman and they ruined my gusset. They ruined my knee. Well, isn't that good? Isn't that a fine way to leave a woman? Yeah. Yes. So I've had a lot to recover from in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hill, I can still make a joke about things. Just been watering a friend's. Now that she's an interesting woman, she's married to Paul Krugman. Have you heard of him? No, I've not heard of him. Oh, He's come to tell me off. Watch him tell me off. Seems like a very lovely community around here. Thank you very much. It was lovely to meet I you. I you up and down and thought, hmm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a thief. No, I'm not, but I'm you're not out a... of order if you put anything on that bloody grave. Well, now that you've mentioned, it is out of order if I do, In... which I won't. No. But when I read about it online and I seen some pictures, I thought it was actually like a quite a nice memorial for her. Obviously, the locals have a different opinion on that, which Absolutely. I, I 100% respect that, and I will not be... Placing any it's pens. Not even down to the locals, it's the family of yes. Sylvia Plath. Yeah. They spent a lot of money on that grave and yeah. people stick plastic pens in yeah. it. God, how common. Thank you very much for your point of view. Yes. It isn't just mine, it's it's the yes. That was a very, very interesting um, conversation, guys. Yeah, it's um, she was very very abrupt and a bit uh, at first, but we managed to break the character and she ended up very happy, so yeah. This is the church that is still in use. Absolutely beautiful. Plenty of very old graves. We love the stonework, some very nice patterns, some faces. Fantastic scribe work as always. some very very old graves around don't i don't like going directly up to them and pointing the camera at them but yeah look at that guys absolutely stunning yeah plenty of
plenty of graves everywhere. It's uh, just the village, as soon as you come into the village, it's just such a fantastic, phenomenal place. It's just like a little village that's stuck in time. Yeah, we'll have a good nosing inside them ruins now, and um, I'm also going to try and put the drone up from public land, see if we can get any nice shots. Here's the uh, history board that I wanted to see. Wow, let's have a good read of this now. St. Thomas Abeke Church and Churchyard. Here in Hepton Stall's ancient churchyard, you can see how a community has built and rebuilt its parish church and commemorated its dead over a period of over 700 years. It is most unusual to find two churches in a single churchyard. A few other examples exist in England. The original church dedicated to the Marty Red Archbishop, St. Thomas Abeket, remained in use until the mid 19th century. Following storm damage in 1847, the decision was taken to raise money to build a replacement new church dedicated to St. Thomas the Apostle. It was completed in 1854 at the cost of £6,666. Wow. Instead of being demolished, the earlier building was left to become a ruin. Originally a chapel in the great parish of Halifax, it has a complex history. The oldest part, built in the mid-1200s in local gritstone, show it had, it had a nave, chancel and a short tower. Over the following centuries, it was remodelled in stages and would often have been a busy construction site. The tower was heightened and the nave and chancel were widened by the addition of side aisles. Linked to the central areas by a series of arched openings known as arcades. In the mid 16th century, the north aisles were replaced by large additional nave and chancel with new north aisles. Ambitious work that reflects the wealth of the area and its large population then, in 1960, in, then in 1617, first floor lofts were added with plain house like windows to light them. Wow, fantastic history, this guy's. During the medieval period, when England was a Roman Catholic country, the church would have been highly decorated with ornate carvings and colourful wall paintings showing stories from the Bible and the lives of the saints. As well as the main altar in the chancel, there were side altars in the aisles and chapel where priests often offered special mass and prayers for the souls of those who had died. Outside on the east gable of the south nave, you can see the original Sanctus Bell Court, where a bell was rung during mass. This all changed in the 16th century in what it was called the Reformation. England broke away from the Catholic Church and became a protest, Protestant country with its own Anglian Church, the Church of England. Changes in belief and worship transformed the appearance of churches. St. Thomas's became much plainer. Paintings, furnishings and images of saints were removed as being superstitions and the interior was re rearranged for the new form of worship. Halfway there, guys. Whereas the medieval Catholic Church was focused on the altars where services were held in Latin, the new Protestant services were in English and the focus was on sermons and Bible readings from the pulpit in the nave. By the late 1700s, the church had been turned into a great preaching house, dominated by a triple-decker mulpit in the nave for the minister, the clerk and the reader. There was seating for 815 people on the ground floor and a further 300 in new upper galleries. The church bells and clocks summoned people to services. 
you can still see traces of the painted clock face on the tower. The clock itself made in Surrey Bridge in 1810 is now the new church tower. <sighs> Real mouthful this guys, I hope you appreciate this. The new church was designed by Bradford architects Mallison and Healy in the Gothic revival style imitating the late medieval designs. Meanwhile, the original medieval church became steadily more ruinous until the mid 20th century when it became a protected ancient monument. Last bit now. The average parish churchyard contains around 15,000 to 30,000 burials. By 1911, this one had become very crowded and a new extension was opened across the back lane beyond the new church. That's where we originally started the video. Among the noteworthy gravestones in the old churchyard is that of David Hartley, known locally as King David, leader of the notorious Cragvale Coiners. That's the guy's house we visited. These counterfeiters were so successful they almost succeeded in destabilizing the country's currency. Hartley's was caught and hanged in York in 1770 and his body suspended in change at the top of the Beacon Hill in Halifax. We've been there. That was in the same video. His gravestone stands 20 meters west and eight meters south of here. We'll find that. In the cemetery across Back Lane is the grave of the American poet, Sylvia Plath, first wife of the late poet, Laureate Ted Hughes, who spent his early years in nearby Myvenroyd. The old church and its burial grounds are important historical survival survivals that provide valuable insights into the lives and beliefs of our forebears. During 2007 to 2008, major renovation and repairs to the church and churchyard were undertaken by Calderdale Council with additional funding provided by the English Heritage. So we are 20 meters west and then eight meters south. So it's up there somewhere, guys. We'll have a nosy for that once we've um, had a good look around. Yeah, so we're just about to enter. Been a long time coming. I'm very excited to get inside this. You can just literally feel how old it is. It's gives off a very, very eerie old vibe. Absolutely beautiful that, beautiful guys. Yeah, let's go and find King David Hartley's grave then. Um, so yeah, we visited his house, we visited the Beacon at Beacon Hill and that just leaves going to York to the place he was hung. So yeah, we're about 20 metres now, 
So it's got to be one of these because it's 20 meters south, which we're pretty much done. And then it was eight meters west, which would mean it'd be down there. No, because this is south. Can't get my bearings. I don't fancy walking across them. I think it's down here. I think it could be one of these really old ones. We'll soon find out. Just had to check my compass for my bearings. But yeah, should be just up here somewhere. I'm hoping to find a couple of coins on his grave to um, identify it, but we might not get that after the woman said it was littering. It's one of them over there, but I can't. I'm not. I don't want to walk on them to get over to it. We'll check these on the field and see if there's any of these ones here without walking over. And uh, the poet is over in the next one where we originally came from. <coughs> It's a bit tricky to find when you don't want to walk over them all. We'll keep looking. We'll find him. Just had to retrace my steps. Went straight back to the notice board, 20 meters followed by another eight meters and yeah we found it guys this is the main purpose of why we're here and you can just see people have left plenty of money on there david harley 1770 wh 1789 1789 can't read that word guys so all we need to do now is visit the place he was hung in 1770 over in york so i will find that and put that one in the bucket list now i forgot the the famous american poet forgot a name so we're gonna go back for her name and then we'll go and find her in the um in the back graveyard and then we're going to head over there. There's a bit of a monument, there's a bit of an area. And then also we've got a museum down here. So I'm going to have a nosy in there and see if I'm allowed to film. Um, where is she? Sylvia Plath. In fact, just while we're here, guys, I'm just going to have a quick nosy at this museum. 1765 archway. Absolutely stunning. I just love these old vibes. I could I could live around here. Look at that for an old door. Beautiful that. What year is that? 1642 grammar school. Wow. Cool. 
August in 1889. Stunning. Beautiful place. Under So had my ear absolutely chewed off for the past hour um, by one of the councillors, one of the treasurers of this place. Um, he's very interested in me doing some work for them. Uh, they want some show reels kind of creating of the of the grounds and stuff like that. So yeah, that's that's all fascinating and possibly potentially could become part of the team here. It's um, it's just crazy, guys. Like you get out in the world and. And you go and meet new people and that networking you know just stopping and chatting to people it, it opens so many doors for you and um, yeah it's definitely a very important part of life just just getting out there and going doing if you do what you love you will meet people you'll meet these people along the way that will open the next doors for you that's what it's all about that's what it's all about it's all fascinating it's, it, he has chewed me ear off i'm a bit exhausted but I've learned a lot of information about him, this place. I was gonna buy his book just out of respect, um, which I'm gonna go back. He's had some more visitors going, so I'm just gonna have a walk around. Got some more of the back graveyard to see. We're gonna see Sylvia Plath's grave, and then um, we'll head out of here, guys. I don't think we're gonna have time for the next location, but we'll be back out next week anyway, so we'll get them all covered. Yeah, so we're just going to enter back into the secondary graveyard. We've just come out of there from that direction, walked around and out. And yeah, I believe we are roughly four, four in and four up to find Sylvia Plath. And there'll be plenty of pens, which I did want to leave a pen and a coin out of respect just because it's what everyone does. But yeah with that uh, interaction towards the beginning of the video with that woman, I am going to leave it. But yeah, what a beautiful place. What an absolute beautiful place. Lovely people. It's a lovely little village. And um, 
I will show you some more as I walk out. I was a bit, I was a bit on edge about recording on the way down. I didn't want to, didn't want to cause a disturbance before I'd started. But yeah, we should be almost here now. I think if we take this path, we should, we should find a. That's nice, someone's put a, a little whiskey glass on that one. Yeah, it's um, a bit overgrown here. I certainly do with some maintenance. Well, it's not full, certainly not full in. We'll just um, have a good nosy around and see if we can find it. Some of these are just completely overgrown, like completely. Some over there, they continue further on, just completely overgrown by bushes. beads on that one beautiful yeah I feel very disrespectful pointing the camera at the graves just had to uh, have a look on Google Sylvia Plath grave just to um, see the actual location of it and we're here A little bit overgrown but you can just see the pens there what people have left which i think is nice it's a couple of um little bits on top yeah so a bit of valuable information what i found out from the guy inside the museum is that the coiner's house, King David, was not the house I visited. It's actually a fully functioning working house which a woman has purchased and it's called Bell House. It's a couple of miles away from this location. I do want to go, but there's a woman that's bought it who had no idea from the estate agents. They didn't notify her that it was his house. So they've had a, she's had a lot of visitors, production teams for films and, and series from the BBC and stuff like that. And she gets a lot of people like myself, explorers, people who are very interested in the story. They're all turning up at her house. She has no idea who they are, why they're there, and she doesn't know whose house she bought. So it, it's one of them. It's very disrespectful to just join the group of people that are turning up at a property. Although I would love to metal detect her property and her surrounding fields, because I'm pretty sure uh, King David's got a lot of hordes that have not been found there, which would just be amazing. But yeah, I don't think, I don't think we'll end up going up there, to be honest. But we were certainly looking to go into York, to the place he was hung, and that'll just finish the story. Um, yeah, we'll see what else we can uh, find up here and have a nice little walk around the village. I'll show you just how old it is. Everything is just old natural stone. It's just really, really nice vibes. Bit eerie and a bit weird and a bit, um, yeah, I can't think of the word to describe some of the people here. It's, um, but obviously it's very sensitive to them. They're probably sick of seeing people come in. I've seen at least 30 visitors walking in and out of this graveyard today. So maybe they're just fed up of seeing the cameras and and just want to be left in peace. But obviously everyone here is very respectful. They just come, they take a look and um, head out. Okay, just see all old graves behind me. There's the existing tower. 
You can just see the old tower and ruins in the background there. See if our little, little old lady friends out and about to say goodbye too. And then we'll head off into the village. So this is the old cobble road that leads you to it. Off the main road, the main village road. It's like a nice little monument, monumental square down here. It just kind of goes round. I'll go the other way so I'm not walking past the cars. And that just kind of overlooks the old church ruins. But yeah, if you just look at all the buildings, it's it's a real tight knit little village. But yeah, I thought this was quite nice. And some uh, concrete repairs. If I could set the drone up from here, I am going to ask, I'm going to ask the lovely gentleman in the museum first before I do, and if I can kind of use him as an excuse to the locals for yeah, I'm doing it for them so they can have the footage. And obviously, I'll offer it him and, and I can send anything over, and then it kind of just gives me that pass just to get everyone on my side rather than a disagreement. and. Obviously I'm not doing anything legal, but I don't want to upset him either. So yeah, I'm going to just head back down, have a quick chat with him again. Hopefully they don't call me for too long. And then we can look at getting the drone up and getting out of here. Everyone is just so lovely and polite here. I'd love to live here. But yeah, it's quite a skinny little street to be honest. There's a couple of nice little pubs. And uh, yeah, it's nice eerie vibes. This is another entrance to the museum. Yeah, it got me for another 20 minutes, good chat. But to be honest, it worked out in my favor because I told him about a couple of things that I do and a couple of plans what he's got for the place. And um, yeah, I've just basically been, been offered 250 pounds to make a 10 minute promo video on the museum, which is just fantastic. It's right up my street lovely it's just opportunities come from from me um exploring that's just fantastic i am going to leave the drone just because i have just arranged to come back next week for a meeting with the board and um, so i'm going to wait for an email for that and come back so we'll get the drone up then because they do like to ask the other church the one that's currently running and just let them know that we will be flying a drone over, which is fine. And they won't say no, they just like to be notified of it. So yeah, <sighs> bit out of breath now, a bit sweaty, a bit warm. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Lovely long street. Turn it round for you. Very warm now, I think it's about 27 degrees. There's just one last little thing that I want to show you on the left hand side. And then that is us. So yeah, another fantastic opportunity. Oh yeah, look at this guys. 1891. Some sort of water pumping system. They might have come up here and just give that a pump and got some some fresh water. Bit of a culvert under there. Oh yeah, I wouldn't like to pump and drink that water. Yeah, so it'd be very nice just to meet meet the team in there. Then two two ladies that are on the um, on the board, they've turned up. So it's nice to meet them. So I've met three of them. There's seven in total. I'll meet the rest of them next week, and we'll take it from there. But yeah, it's nearly back to the car now, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, kind of a bit more history to find out. We've got some information we can chase up on the bell house and we've also got the information we can chase up on the actual hanging in York. 
I want a good excuse to go to York. I love that place. It's um, it's where I took my partner to get engaged and ask her, asked her to marry me. Um, been multiple times. Absolutely love the place. Whew, bit of a hike up here. Bit of a hike. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. And uh, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. And we'll see you on the next one.